somebody to hold that uh, against the Rock 48, you know, 22 in the GNT. Whatever y'all brought you got, man, we just you know, spirit. We shot him at the top of 41? Uh, Kyle. Okay, Kyle. Yeah, he's around about 20, that's good. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we're going to give all praise out of glory to two. Yeah, how old about Shem? Yeah, we shot him by Shem Akapadash. We're going to give double honors to the Apostle Elder's Great Millstone. All right, I want to say shalom to all you sincere heart of Akiwa Akwa. Well, first, Salaki, first and foremost, I want to give all praise out of glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, by Shem Kapadash. That's all praise to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, and his son's name, we're going to be called Jesus Christ, real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. And uh, also give praise out of glory to the Yahweh Kapadash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force of entity, entity that makes the education possible. All right, so uh, as you can see, a great millstone. Uh, Dallas Brothers, back at it again with another Saturday uh, lesson. All right, now we're just going to flow through the Spirit. You know, Lord willing, we're going to stop at the top. We're going to start at the top of uh, Isaiah, the 41st chapter, and, uh, you know, see how far we can get through. You know, it's a beautiful chapter. The brother had uh, posted a couple of scriptures in the chat earlier today, and uh, I was like, man, it's, you know, encouraging, you know, exhorting. You know, this is what this is what we need, you know, uh, those of us that's a part of the hope for the elect, we need, as a matter of fact, somebody can grab, what is that, uh, Isaiah, no, not Isaiah, uh, Psalm chapter 46, be still and know, I believe it's like the second to the last verse. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10, it says, be still and know that I am Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Be still and know that I am Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's what Yahweh's name means, man. He exists. He is. You see? He that cometh, it was that Hebrews 11 6. For without faith it is impossible to please the Most High. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is. You see? So be still and know that he is. All right? That's ultimately, that's, that's, that's what's going to keep us, you know, stable in the hour of temptation which we're coming upon that's going to try the whole earth, man. The Lord is testing, you know, our fidelity towards him and who, who, we, uh, who he is, man. See, you got it, bro. It says, be still and know that I am Yahweh Bashim. Does that mean that you just freeze a lot? Like when it says be still, does that mean that you just freeze up your your lazy bum, you're not doing anything every day? You know, you just huddle up in your room just reading the scriptures? No. Being still going is going into your uh, your spiritual overtone, how you conduct yourself in the spirit. Are you frantic in the spirit right now? Are you nervous? Are you afraid of the things that's coming up on the earth? No, who call me collecting? That's it. Being sober minded. When you go into that word sober in the Greek, it literally means cool, calm, and collected, you know, for lack of better words. Having a, a dispassionate spirit, meaning you're, you you don't show any emotion. Because that's what the spiritual demon Satan, through these uh, through his physical counterparts, can play upon, is us showing our emotion. You see? As a matter of fact, somebody can grab, what's that, Exodus 14 and uh, 14. Because Moses told the children of Israel the same thing. He said, be still. Shop, if you mind, can I grab that? Yeah, so I can, uh, yeah, so like, yeah so let them finish that and you got it. It's just a couple more lines. It says, Be still and know that I'm a how about Shemiel Shai. I will be exalted among the heathen. That's what we waiting on, man. We're waiting for our power, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, because he's sending his son, Yahweh Shai, to execute judgment on his behalf, right? To be exalted among the heathen. Because right now, ain't nobody thinking about the Lord, man. <coughs> See? But they will. When his when when his judgments are are, are up close and personal, right. Psalms nine and sixteen for the Lord is known by his judgments, and this is how he's going to once again get himself a name and a praise and fame in the planet Earth when he's exalted among the heathens through his judgments. You got it, bro. It says, "I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. <laughs> I will." And see, this is a promise and a threat, man. Right. You see, because that's that's how it's going to happen. It's going to happen through his mighty hand. Yahweh Shai, and, and, and Yahweh Shai is about to run through this place, man. Him and the holy host of angels and particular men that he's going to endow with, with spiritual powers to, to you know, to, <laughs> to get nitty-gritty. 
You see? They're about to run through this place. And that, that's what this place needs, man. This place needs a good a good cleansing. Mm -hmm. But uh, you got it. What, that was, was it? Okay. Yeah, I was just going to bring out that uh, Be Still uh, uh, in the blue letter. And it's a... Uh, um, it's like it. It's a... Uh, Rapa. Okay? And it goes into refrain. Forsake. Let alone. Um, to let go. All right, and it's beautiful, you know, to abandon. It's beautiful what the, what the priest said. You know, refrain, let go from the thoughts of the world, man. Okay, let go of, uh, of the idols. Let go of the things that are the concern of the world, man. Okay, that you can focus in or hone, hone in on our power. Yahweh, Yahweh, Shah. You know, let go of the things that are, that are distractions within this world, man. Whether it be your job, your wife, your, you know, just your life in general. Let those things go and clear your mind so that you focus uh, on Yahweh Shabbos, but Yahweh, why Yahweh Shabbos, refraining from, you know, doing your own thing, refraining from all the, the, the cares of this world, basically. Yeah, well, that's why Yahweh Shabbos Shabbos has a Sabbath, you know, uh, implemented, you know, amongst us, right? That's a, that's a day to where we're commanded to be still, mm. you see? Mm -hmm. And we know that scripture says that the Lord giveth rest unto his people. But the only way you're going to get that rest is through these scriptures. What is that, Second Thessalonians 1? For you who are troubled, come rest, rest with us. This is because when we were in the world, man, we were we we're all frantic in the spirit. We didn't know we, we was here and there. We was all over the place, man. But now the Lord, through his word, through the subtlety and the simplicity of his gospel, has called us into this glorious rest to where now he's telling us, hey, be still, bro. I got you. Can we can we get that in Exodus uh, 14 and 13? I got you. During the time of the first redemption amongst the children of Israel. Right. This is what the Lord was commanding us. And now we're coming to the time of that second redemption, which only only the elect is going to make it out. This ain't going to be no mass exodus like the first time. The Lord is only calling a, a small, a small remnant of his flock this time. That's going to take heed to his commands. You got it, bro. Uh, <clears throat> this is Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13 it says, as and Moses said unto the people. Fear ye not, stand still. See that? Fear ye not, stand still. Now, what was, in context, what was happening right now? You had Pharaoh and his hosts, his army, man, coming in like a flood against us, man. We, we were looking at the Red Sea, you know, like that. It wasn't split yet, but we were looking at uh, Pharaoh and his hosts coming, charging straight at us, man. But Moses said, ah, just stand still, y'all, just chill, <laughs> right? Remember all them plays that the Lord just did for us. Remember the firstborn that he just, you don't think, you don't think he's going to come deliver you now? So he said, be still, man, just relax. And that's what we're telling our people, man. And ultimately, you know, uh, when we, when we preach and, uh, and talk about faith, that's what faith, that's what faith is ultimately, you know, causing our people to do. It's causing you to be still, relax. That's why you don't see us, yeah, we, we could, we can speak about Jacob's trouble. We can speak about martial law. We can speak about the things that Esau has planned, right? And we can speak about it boldly. And brothers, we can still sleep good at night. Mm -hmm. Why? Because <laughs> we still. Faith. That's so, it, bro. Faith. Faith has a still. Now the fight is, is, is maintaining that. God. That's that's gonna be the ultimate fight, is to maintain the energy we got, man. And but the Lord gonna have to He's gonna have to charge us up in the spirit, man. Because ultimately at the end of the day, right, the reason why the elect is gonna make it is why? Because the, the, the Holy Spirit is gonna be upon them to cause them to make it. You see? Yeah. I got a quick one. God. God. It's the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For the Most High hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If a, if a brother doesn't mind, can, can somebody grab that word sound? You know? Because it's a beautiful scripture just going into the fact that the matter is that, you know, the Lord is going to essentially, like you was going into, I don't know why going into how before we came into the truth we was all over the place we had a chaotic spirit upon us you know but the lord has given us the understanding to know that hey this is just is what it is right now man you know this is what you know this is part of his his will and to understand the will of the lord is a very comforting thing man you know that that takes the gift of faith in the first place to even believe that this is actually like the word of the most high man you know because it is you got that word uh, yeah this draw g4995 and it reads Sophroni for for Sophroni for Sophronismos, Sophronismos, and it says, an admonishing, admonishing, or calling of soundness of mind, to moderation, and self-control. Temperance. First Corinthians the ninth chapter goes into temperance, 
how uh, no need not that he was run uh, run it, you know, to to essentially win the prize, man. And the prize is the kingdom of heaven to be a part of those first fruits under Yahweh Shai to receive that mercy that was promised unto our forefathers the first go around, man. Because as it's written, all of Israel is going to be saved. But it starts first and foremost with the elect on this side, man. That's what we're doing this for. So the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but the spirit of to what? To have a sound mind, understanding the power and the might of the Lord, the power that we have through the Rechakodash, right? And of love, man. How we treat one another. You know, everything that's entailed within the scriptures, man. You know? But you got it, bro. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, real quick, this, uh, going into what the brothers, brothers were going into, this is Joshua chapter 1. Now I want to get a uh, ninth verse because if we essentially look at it, it was about it was basically after Moses' death, and then basically the Lord had Joshua lead leading the nation of Israel. We were about to have to go and take the land, take over the land of Canaan, over those heathens. And the Lord told us, He commanded us this. This is Joshua one and verse nine, in LT. This is my command: be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For you, how about you? I show your power is with you. Whithersoever you go. So that's why the brothers are able to speak boldly about America being destroyed and all these things because we believe that the Lord is with us. He said, He said, I'll be with you uh, to the end of the earth. That's right. Now, also, on top of that, we understand that if we uh, continue in faith, the Lord will deliver us. We believe that. That's what's compelling us to keep going. Yeah, okay. Yahweh yeah, Shai said, uh, uh, Fear not, for I have overcome the world. So if we believe that He that He arose from the dead and that you know His sacrifice covers us, that, that alone is, is all that we need, man. Mm. You know, that's Revelation 12 and 11. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, yeah, that's right. by the word and testimony. Love not their lives unto death. Man. Yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, we go back in Exodus. Yeah. This is Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13 from the top. It says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And see the salvation of the Lord. And you see the salvation of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, you see a lot of terrible things simultaneously, man. You yeah. see a lot of death. Yeah. But we're still commanded to stand still, relax. The Lord doing this for us, man. Like, the Lord striking, because me and the brothers we was talking about it earlier, bro. Like, we're in the plagues right now. Like, out here in Texas, you know, we haven't had rain in like damn near two months, man. And when it did rain about two months ago, it was just for 30 minutes and the shit stopped. Yeah. Like, everybody, every, all the grass is dead. The trees are withered, like it's bone, like creeks over there by my house is bone dry. This ain't no normal summer that we have, man. This is like we are actively in the plagues. Yeah. You have the, the morales of the people just getting worse and worse and worse, yeah. right? The brothers talking about how the food quality, brothers don't want to eat, man, because the food is just it's, it's making you sicker. Everything is getting worse. We're in the plagues, man. But what are we to do? Are we supposed to be like, oh shit? Uh, no, now's the time to implement what we've been learning because it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse, right? So the, the the fight, once again, as we said earlier, is to maintain what we've been given and to grow in it, man, and to be still in spirit. You got it, bro. It's like if I'm making this, bring it up, preach up real quick. It's going to what the priest said. This is uh, um, is Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and the strength of salvation, for the fear of the Lord is his treasure. And that's going into that sound mind, okay? When you go into that word, um, uh, stability, it's a uh, firmness, fidelity, steadfast, all right, strength, all right, because that's what's going to be needed in the times that are to come, man. You're going to have to have that sound mind and be stand and be and be rootedly, fir rooted, firm, rootedly into this truth and what you believe in in the faith of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, man. That's what's going to be needed in the times that are coming. And that's essentially what Moses is saying to the people here, man, you know, when going in and before the Lord getting ready to, you know, make this, you know, do this marvelous work. You know, be still, have that faith, believe, stand firm, man, and watch the Lord do his work. Well, all through the Maccabees, you read the, uh, the, 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 the battles that the Maccabean family, you know, was fighting. Mm. Before every battle, they had they had an exhortation, you know, for all the, for all the mighty men that was going to be fighting with them, man. Yeah. Pretty much uh, doing what we're doing now, going through the law and the prophets, man, calling calling to mind the, the, the ancient accounts. Of when the Lord stepped in and moved in for us, man, telling them, hey, relax, yeah, we finna go to battle, but hey, remember who's fighting for us at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That same angel that was with us in the wilderness, as long as we can be obedient to him, right, he's gonna be an enemy unto our enemies, man. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's finish that out. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, get Isaiah. Okay, this is Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, in the middle of the verse, it says, 
stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will sh uh, show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye, ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Ooh, why? Because the Lord, the Lord had them to get swallowed up and drowned by the, uh, by the, uh, uh, by the Red Sea, man. You see? So, um, let's go ahead and jump to the Isaiah. Like, yeah, when you go into uh, Isaiah 41, right, in particular, like if you have you know a heading on your Bible or whatnot, the the, ti the title of the chapter is uh, the Most High's help for Israel, mm -hmm. and our people needs help, man. We was going to Lazarus and the rich man, you know, uh, uh, last week. You know, the beloved brother Kawan had went into it, and when you go into uh, Lazarus' name, what Lazarus means, it, it means uh, one whom the Most High helps. You see. And with us, you know, being spiritual Lazarus as a nation, we are the one who needs help, man. Why? Because can we grab, what is that, Hosea 13 and 9 real quick? The so-called white man don't need help. You see? These other nations, the, the so-called uh, so Chinese race, the East Indian man, they don't they don't need help. They they have they have their uh, <laughs> they have their slice of the pie, man. Okay. Yep, you got it. Hosea 13 and 9. O oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. O oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. We did this to ourselves, man. Right. We'll be speaking about the, the, the messed up predicaments we in, you know, working these these, these, these dead-end jobs. We're here in America, you still the family structures through. But well, we did this to ourselves, man. No. All right, but go ahead. O oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. But in me is thine help. And where Jake gets it all twisted, is where he tries to find help out of any and every other source outside of Yahweh Bashar Shah. There's only one way to receive help, man. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, in, in this in this system, in this world, you know, you get in a car wreck or whatever, you know, if you don't call 911, chances are you ain't gonna get help. Mm -hmm. You gotta it's, it's programmed in everybody's mind. If something fucks up in this day of mine, hey, I gotta call 911 to get help. Well, that should be instinct. For us, as as the Lord's people, man, when we're stuck, you know, that's the whole, you know, Hosea, you get yeah. a 5 and 15, Got that it. was the whole purpose of the Lord putting us in this uh, predicament, man, is to call upon him. 5 and 15, sir? Yep. This is Hosea 5 and 15. I will go and, and return to my place till they, till they acknowledge, so I can, till they acknowledge their offenses and seek my face. Right. So the Lord says, I will go and return unto my place. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the Lord, he's with, <laughs> for many generations, he's withdrawn himself away from us as a people, man. And allowed Esau to have his way on us. You see? Mm -hmm. He says, until they, they do what? Uh, and and uh, my face, uh, offense, my face, uh, and their afflictions the like, let me start from top. I will go and return to my place. Until they acknowledge their offense. Until they acknowledge their offense. And how is that done? By repentance, man. Yep. Being accountable for what we have done. Not trying to make an excuse. You know? <laughs> like like what like what uh like what our forefathers did in the uh, and foremother Eve did in the garden. You know? Eve said, Well the serpent did this. Adam said, Well the woman you gave me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All that blame shipping and there was no accountability. But now we're, now the sons of God, now we're acknowledging our offense, man. Mm -hmm. So now the Lord, he said, what is that, Jeremiah 29? If you seek me, I will be found in thee. You shall find me with all your heart. Go ahead. Go to say, um, and seek my face in their affliction. They in will their affliction. That's the affliction. point, man. Mm -hmm. Jay got to be afflicted. We are visual and, and up close <laughs> uh, personal learners, man. This is why, like the school system that we went in, you know, that we were a part of when we when we used to go through K through twelve. Jake, hey, we, we we didn't learn shit like that, man. Sitting behind the desk, no, we gotta we gotta feel it, we gotta go through it because you could you could talk to Jake till you blew in the face, but until Jake goes through it in their affliction, right? That's when they're gonna know. Oh shit, man, your righteousness is the best way, you know, following the laws and commandments. That is the best way. So this this planet Earth as we've known it. Right, so far, this is just a trial run. This is just a mock simulation of what's really to come. This is this was necessary for us, man. We had to taste this evil. Oh, yeah. And now Yahweh Shah is about to clean this place up, change the setting of the stage, right? And now he's about to plant righteousness upon this planet, exactly what this planet was made for. 
this beautiful planet Earth, you know, that's hovering in the middle of nowhere in the universe. Mm -hmm. It wasn't created for us to pay taxes to pedophiles, man. No, that's no, not what this planet was made for. This planet was made for righteousness to dwell on it, right? And, and, and true order and justice to be executed upon it, man. You got it, bro. Oh, that was it on that. Okay. Yeah. That's it for you. Yep. This is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 1. It says, Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. He said, Keep silence before me, O islands, man. Now, can we grab Habakkuk 2 and 20? See? And the Lord, he demands silence, man. So right now, everybody got shit to say. Everybody got an opinion. <laughs> you got TikTok. You got people just, every, everybody got a platform to, to spew their madness and their philosophies, man. You so got it, bro. What did you want? Habakkuk 2 and 20. I got you. Yeah. This is uh, Habakkuk 2 and 20. It reads, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Now, it says the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him, man. You see? Why? Because when the Lord is in his temple, man, mm -hmm. Psalms, Psalm 68 and like the last, no, Psalm 69 in the last verse. You see? Because it's a dreadful thing when, when, when the spirit of Yahweh is in his temple. And we know that we make up his temple, man. First Corinthians chapter 3. And because when you read particular accounts, you know, like First Kings 8, when, uh, when King Solomon was dedicating the temple, right, uh, when the Lord was pleased with the sacrifice, what happened? That the Spirit of the Lord filled the temple, and it was dreadful, man. The priest couldn't even go in. It was so dreadful, but it was beautiful and glorious at the same time. See? And it was silence, man. It was nothing but praises going up. And that's what's about to happen upon this planet Earth, man. Everybody's going to shut the hell up when the Lord gets exalted, when his Spirit rests upon this place once more, man. By May, I, that's what it says in Sirach, the 43rd chapter. It says, the Lord is great and very terrible. Mm -hmm. How shall we begin to magnify him? <laughs> it says, when you exalt the Lord, you can never go far enough, man. Because he is, he is he's far beyond our, you know, our, our comprehension to an extent. We have the, what we need, but it's, it's, it's so much more. We don't even know. Yep. Let me grab that real quick. I'm going to go back to Isaiah. Yeah, this is Psalm 16, the last verse is 35. Oh, how are we? Huh? So like the house, 69? No, 68. Yeah, 68. Oh, okay. Yeah, I pulled it wrong. Oh, oh, yeah, how are you? How are you? Thou art terrible out of thy holy place. See that? Because Habakkuk said, let all the earth keep silence. Remember, the Lord is in his temple. David is saying, what? For, oh, Lord, you are terrible, right, out of thy holy places. The Lord is terrible out of his holy places. made made dreadful, mm -hmm. right? So this is why, hey, the earth is going to be silent when he comes back. Go ahead. The God of Israel is that is is He that giveth strength and power unto His people. Unto His people, the Lord's going to give strength and power unto us, man. Mm -hmm. Strong with the elect. That's right. And right now we have we have spiritual strength and spiritual power, with with the Holy Spirit residing in us, man, giving us the understanding of these scriptures. That's power, man. That's right. Yep. He said that in the Acts, the first chapter, for you should be my witnesses, uh, both unto Jerusalem, right, and then the uttermost parts of the earth, and the Holy Spirit shall give you power, man. So we have power now, but it's only going to get increased as long as we maintain That's right. Right, what the Lord's been giving us so far. That's right. You got it. Blessed be Yahweh, Yahweh, Shah. Mm -hmm. that? So yeah, we'll go back, bro. Okay. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 1, it says, Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Yeah, and that's what and that's what we saying, man. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna get that in the NLT real quick. Yeah. This is uh, Isaiah 41 in the NLT. It says, "Listen in silence before me, you lands beyond the sea. Bring your strongest arguments. Come now and speak. The court is ready for your case." Mm. <laughs> see, so the Lord says, "Bring your strongest arguments, man." And you see how these are how the arguments. Right of all these uh, um, other different waiver philosophies, man. Right, they're not holding any weight against the scriptures, man. Mm -hmm. None at all. What is that? Second Corinthians ten. Right, how the how the weapons of our warfare are not calling, but mighty for the Most High, pulling down the strongholds. You see, this, this, the words of the Heavenly Father, man, have been pulling down all these vain arguments, man. Feminism, right. everything Esau's promoted, 
because really when you get to the root of it, all right, all these other philosophies, it all stems back to the serpent, man, to Esau. And, that, and simultaneously as Esau has been exposed, all the mm -hmm. bullshit and rhetoric he's been uh, 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 passing out as doctrine throughout the centuries, man, are being exposed to be futile, man. You know, like we just, like we, you better say something? Oh, no, I said precept. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got a precept? Come on. Let me cut you off, bro. No, you, no, you good, brother. Uh, yeah, like what we just mentioned earlier, like feminism. Now we see that, that shit, that, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Women's equality. He don't care about you women. He don't care about your equality. <laughs> he just wanted to get out the house and in the workforce so he could get more money, get more taxes, man. Yeah. That's what all that was about. <laughs> so now you see how the scriptures was, was, was real with you from upfront, man. Telling you how women should be silent, keepers at home. And now a lot of women are regretting it because they, now they see the, the lie that the serpent uh, gave it to them. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's just one out of out of trillion, man. You know, of course, Christianity. If you're in Christianity in 2023, you need to get a CT scan tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I may add just real quick, and, and one of the main reasons, too, because... You know, Esau would say, you know, one of the quickest or most efficient ways to, to defeat a nation is basically to, to, to take out the head, and the head being the man. All right. In this kingdom, man, uh, uh, Eve is the head of our nation, man. Like it or not. And that's why we're fucked up. If you women went for that bait, man. OK, so this is why we're in the predicament that we're in. And now you guys are finally starting to see that y'all been bought into a lot, man. But you got it. Okay. This is a uh, Sirach chapter 16 and verse 22. It says, who can declare the works of his justice or who can endure them? Mm -hmm. For his covenant is afar off and the trial of all things is in the end. Ooh. Land back on the point. You know, all these different wicked inventions and devices and philosophies, all these things have been tried out. That's what a trial is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a test run. We've seen this shit play out on the planet Earth, and it does not work. It leads to nothing but death. Chaos. So the Lord rose up the prophets, right, the head elders and apostles on down, right, in the affiliate camps who are associated. And we are, the, you know, through the Spirit, you know, we believe we're the men of the Lord, too. We're declaring the works of justice, mm -hmm. truth, mm -hmm. you know. And ultimately, when our Lord comes back, the truth that we've been declaring is actually going to be actually uh, facilitated and executed on the planet Earth forever. You know, beautiful. Can you read that one more time? That's, that's beautiful scripture. Sirach chapter 16 and verse 22. It says, who can declare the works of his justice or who can endure them? For his covenant is afar off and the trial of all things is in the end. It says the trial of all things is in the end. Yep. And that proves that what? <laughs> it, well, we know Esau's in the end. Second, there's just uh, uh, six, six and eight, six and nine, man. Mm -hmm. Right. And what has the Lord, who has the Lord set up in the end? First Corinthians chapter four. But I think that the Most High set up the apostles last. Mm -hmm. So, so the apostles is going to be proving those things, showing, showing the whole world the, 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 uh, the lies that's been shown unto them at the, at the end of Esau's rule, man. That's right. And that's exactly what you see. That's why you can fast forward to Revelation chapter 18. It says what? <laughs> Rejoice, holy apostles. Right. And prophets, for the Lord has avenged you on her, man. Right. Yeah. And what do you see happening? Right? What do you think this live stream is about, man? You see, the apostles and the elders right now, they're holding camp live right now. Yep. In Babylon. Yep. This is happening, yep. showing the world the lies that Babylon has been the, that wine that this that this harlot has poured down the throats of all these different nations, man. And so, so you got it, bro. You got it, bro. You got I was just going to say, I was just going to say, because we're not like, we're being tried too. Like the trial of all things, that includes, that includes everybody on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. All the spirits that have been reincarnated here, we're all being tried, you know? And that's how we also know that this is the end. That's why there's so many people on the planet Earth. That's why all hell is about to break loose because the Al Bashim Al Shai is about to make manifest what each individual, you know, uh, is made of, who they are, you know? And that's, that's Kind of the water, and that's why we open up with Isaiah 41 and 1 when it says, Let all the earth keep silence. Because when you're in a trial period in the courtroom, the best thing for you to just shut the hell up <laughs> because all eyes and all ears are open. This is uh Amos 5 and 13. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. See, so if you're wise, you will keep silence right now, man. That don't mean you're not speaking, 
you know, no, it just means that, uh, well, in certain cases, yeah, <laughs> you know, the, the world would be a lot better place if people, especially these women, just shut the hell up. And a lot of these niggas too, man. Mm -hmm. Niggas are the worst, you know? Matthew chapter, that's why you always said in Matthew chapter 12, what? For every idle word shall be given an account in the day of judgment, man. Yep. With the ear of jealousy hears all things. So the best thing is just be quiet. If you're not speaking, if you're not speaking the testimony, the best thing is be quiet, man. All right. So uh you got anything? Anybody? Nah, we got go to Isaiah 41 and 2. God. Isaiah 41 and 2. It says, Who raised up the righteous man from the east? Yeah, and this is a question. It says, Who raised up the righteous man from the east? <laughs> That's Yahweh. He raised up the righteous man from the east. Yahweh shot. Whose goings forth are from everlasting, from everlasting, man. Micah, the fifth chapter. You got it. It says, Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him ruler over kings. And he gave them... And that's what Yahweh Shah is coming to do. Is to take the take the, uh, the throne, take the uh, crowns off of all these kings, man. Yep. Like it says in Revelation chapter 11. All right? Maybe if a brother wanted to grab that. Revelation 11? God. Or 19. Huh? I was thinking about 19. I was That's a good one, too. God. But uh, I think it was one in particular in Revelation 11. It was like, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I grab This is uh, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. It says, mm -hmm. And the God. seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world mm -hmm. are become the kingdoms of our Lord. And of his Hamashiach. See? Of his Hamashiach. That's that man that he raised from the east, as Isaiah 41 said. And he shall reign forever and ever, man. That's the house of David. That's the throne of David. Because when David came into power, what do you read in the book of 2 Samuel? How he took the how he took that crown off of that king's head and he put it on his. And it had all that, all them golds and the yeah. rubies and yeah. it was heavy. That's what Yahweh Shah's coming to do, man. Setting up, setting up the throne of David, his father, right here on the planet Earth, man. Right. Uh, if I may add, going into that Daniel seventh chapter. Yeah. You know, I beheld until the thrones were cast down. Woo. So all of the kings of this yeah. nation yeah. of the world are going to be cast down when you have a shot get here. Yeah. You know, that's why the Revelation talks about him who has a, a he's going to have with him a, a many crowns. All right, because he's coming to take rulership from all the heathen, man. The heathen rulership is over with. That's right. Yeah, that's the one I was really thinking about. Yeah, you're right, bro. Yeah, many crowns on his head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it ties to it, but yep. yeah, yep. yeah that's the point was made. Yeah. Spirit. I have one more slide. I have yeah. one more precept proving that that going into Yahweh Shah. Matthew 24 and 27, it says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east mm. and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Just linking that up. You know what I mean? And where was that star coming from in Matthew chapter 2? Was it coming from the east? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. We might slow it. I'm God. But yeah, yeah, uh, this Isaiah uh, 41, yeah, 41 and verse 3. You want me to read it? Kai, it's cool. Did you cut it out verse 2? Yeah, because you're two. looking for, uh, you mean find that? It can. Kai, yeah, I was going to look for it. Right, I thought he was reading, but I don't know what you're for. You got it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's read that. Yeah. Like, this is, uh, yep. uh, hey, because the East, that's the best way, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The it's, West is a mess. <laughs> the West ain't that. Yeah. The West is a mess. The East, we want the man from the East. You now see, because that's that's the ancient past, man. That's right. That's where that's where Adam was situated. You see, in the garden. You see? The old past. And, and now you got you got Adam coming again. See, your house was shot, man. That man from the East. God. To come to restore that Adamic, that Adamic uh, uh vibration upon the earth. You see, because when you go into that, uh, what's it, Acts, the third chapter, it says for the time of refreshing and the time mm -hmm. of the restitution. Mm -hmm. You go into that word restitution, it goes into the state of man before the fall of Adam. So it only makes sense that that, <laughs> that the light is coming from the east. All right, Yahweh Shah is coming back to restore what was destroyed in the, in the time of the garden, man. Yep. And we'll slide, yep, brother. Back. I, I was just going to add, when, when Peter came and asked you how was shy, we've forsaken all. But so we have there, and it said, in the times of ref refreshing, in the times Spirit. of regeneration, yep. you shall sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, yep. getting our people in order and subjecting the heathen. Man, you know? yep. that's it. This is Matthew 2 and 2, saying, where is he? And this is during the time of, of, of Herod, just so you know, the time of Yahweh Shah, and he being born, just to give you a background on it. 
This is Matthew 2 and 2, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east mm -hmm. and come to worship him. Man, and that was a chariot. Mm -hmm. That star was a chariot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, it says and, and, uh, we have seen it from the east. Mm -hmm. See, the Lord showed me the origins of where it's, you know. That's heavy, man. Right? Yeah. And we know that star, that star of Jacob. Boy, that star, what was that? Uh, let's grab that. Numbers 24. We start like verse 14. Yes, the star of Jacob coming back to wreak havoc upon the planet Earth and to redeem his people, man. John, just the book of Numbers, chapter 24. You said verse 14? Uh, yeah, we start verse 14. And yeah. this is a prophecy that uh, that the Lord gave unto a heathen, man. What was his name? Balaam? Oh, uh, Balaam. Yeah, 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 his name was Balaam. Yep. See, so, and ultimately, the reason why the Lord gave this heathen, right, this, uh, this, this vision was ultimately... Right to show what was going to be in store for the Lord's people, because the heathens, because uh, because Balaam was like, man, I wish I basically, lack of better words, Balaam was like, I wish I was one of these people. Yep. For their latter end is blessed. Yep. You yeah. see, so that's the Lord show. That's the Lord showing His salvation in the sight of all these nations, man. Shout out, yeah. Because you have a Christian, you know, read particular scriptures when it says that the Lord showed His salvation in the sight of all nations. They're like, oh, see, anybody can be saved. No. That just means that, that all these nations are going to see what the Lord's going to do for his people, man. Yeah. That's him showing his salvation in the sight of all these nations. And Balaam, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a testimony of that, man. But you got it. And it, it directly addresses Edom and within Edom, Amalek. Man. You know what I'm saying? So the, uh, the chief Sick. tribe of, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's like you quoted, uh, uh, you had made mention of uh, Second Ezra 6 and 9. Esau is the end of the world. This is this is a, a direct prophecy dealing with end times, man. You know, <laughs> so this is you know heavy, but yeah, uh, that's, that's this is this is more proof that that uh, you got to read the whole scroll. You just can't be like a Christian and just read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's there's prophecy that we're about to get in the Book of Numbers, <laughs> you know, which is the third book in the Bible, right? That there's prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Right. Yet, you see. That's so right. yeah, you got you got to know these things, man. You got it. Huh? Come. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 24, and verse uh, 14. It says, And now, behold, I go unto my people. Come, therefore, and I will, advertise, uh, I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. He says, I'm going to advertise it, man. I'm going to make it known. I'm going to make it public. This is what, you, this is what these people are going to do to your people, man. In the yeah. latter days. In the latter days. Ooh. Come on, bro. See that? End time prophecy. Yep. The brother just read Sirach 16, the trial of all things is in the end. Yep. We're in those latter days where this prophecy is about to be fulfilled, man. That's right. That's why the apostles and elders said, man, if you're not talking about prophecy, you ain't talking about nothing, man. That's the that's the only thing hey, we should be talking about is prophecy. You got it out. Uh, verse 15. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, had said, and the man whose eyes are open had said, he had said. The man whose eyes are open, meaning what? Meaning the Lord was giving him this vision. Because the prophets, they were known as seers. So he was, he was able to see in the future what was about to happen. You got it. He had said, which heard the words of the Most High and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open, mm. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold. Oh, that means Balaam's gonna have to. He's he back. Yeah. He says, "I shall see him, but not now, though." Mm -hmm. That same thing Job said in nineteen. Mm -hmm. My eyes shall see my redeemer. Mm -hmm. Revelation one and seven. Yeah, those, those who pierce them, all eyes shall see them, even they who pierce them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Ezra's. Yep. yep. What was me? Yep. 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 God, yeah, man. So hey, we here, baby. The trial is <laughs> all things in the end. The Lord got the same spirits back. Yep. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you got it. It says, "I shall see him, but not now." I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. I shall behold him, but not nigh, meaning not close, though. Because he's a he's a heathen. So he ain't going to be close and intimate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yahweh yeah, shall like like the Lord's people live. Right? Right. right. You got it. Social distance. And it says. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks to Moab. Because he's a Moabite, right? Hey, he started that shit. That's, 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 that's a lesson. That's funny. <laughs> Man. <laughs> it says, uh. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star, and that word star is capitalized too, which Ooh. shows it has significance. Get that it says, I, it shall, there shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Yeah, there shall come a star, because what do you call men of, 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 of high renown in this world? Superstars. Superstars. You know? Daniel, the 12th chapter says, for they that turn me into righteousness, they shall be as the stars of the firmament, roughly paraphrasing. 
So the men of the Lord are going to be like stars, man. We're the real superstars, Lord willing. That's right. You got it. I'll start with your whole shot. Uh, yeah, let's get that. Uh, Revelation 22, just backing up that star. Revelation 22 and 16, it says, I, Shai, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the And that's what we're doing right now. We're, we're testifying these things in the churches, man. Can you see? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I am the root and the offspring of David. Come on, that's that's an immaculate conception cut. Yeah, He's telling you, I'm the offspring of David, man. Right, right, right. I come from David's loins. Mm -hmm. But yet you got people thinking that he just sprung out of nowhere. He sprung from Mary. You know, Mary didn't have sex with an actual man. He got it up. It says, I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the bright and morning star. And we're reading a prophecy in Numbers about that star, man. What that star, Yahweh is going to do. So this is a complete cut. If anybody thinks that Yahweh Shah is coming back for all nations, just, just, okay, what is that star going to do? Let's see. Can I, can oh, I yeah, got, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3. I'm going to start at the top and just jump down to the point. This is verse 1. It says, but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them. So this is dealing with the, the men of the Lord, man. I just wanted to start there just to, you know, kind of segue into the point so it made sense. Uh, this is verse... Uh, Seven, it says, and in the time of their visitation, they shall shine mm. and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble, man. Mm -hmm. Going into spiritual power, us being <coughs> those new bodies, mm -hmm. being in that, being in our former glory, as the scripture talks about, man. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, it just came to mind. I want to bring yeah. that up. Mm -hmm. But I'll jump back to that um, uh, Numbers 24, and this is, uh, I'll start at the top of verse 17 again. It says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Mm -hmm. And that scepter, uh, pursuant to Genesis 49, is not going to depart from Judah. It's that, it's that conquering uh, lion from the tribe of Judah, as we read in Revelation chapter 5. Man. You got it? And shall smite the corners of Moab. He's going to smite the corners of Moab, man. I mean, he's going to destroy it. He's going to run through these, these uh, so-called Chinese people, man. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. And destroy all the children of Sheth. Mm-hmm. And Edom shall be a possession. It says, and Edom, and Edom shall be a possession. <laughs> when you possess something, that means that you own it, man. That's right. That's what's going to happen until, until Esau, Edom. We're going to own your ass, boy. That's right. You got it up. Seir also, so like it, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. Mm -hmm. And Israel shall do valiantly. Yep. Israel shall do valiantly. Uh, valiant. That's that means, that's yeah, that's <laughs> you know, and that's why we're going to Isaiah chapter 41 right now. A plea and a call for the most high help. The Lord is going to help his people, strong with the elect, to do valiantly over the enemies, man. You got it out. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Man, out of Jacob. Can you read that again? Come on, verse 19. Out of Jacob shall come he. That shall have dominion. That's right. And you read about that in Revelation chapter 7. How that dominion is going to be unto. Let me grab that real quick. This is uh, the book of Daniel chapter 7. And verse um, four, verse 13. It says, I saw in the night visions. There's another prophecy right there. Mm -hmm. That word vision in the, in the Hebrew is uh, 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 hazan, hazan. And it means a divine oracle or prophecy. So it says, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, that's that star out of Jacob, uh, uh, came with the clouds of heaven, those chariots, and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him before him, and there was given him dominion. Woo! That's what you're reading right there. Yahweh Shah is coming back to, to lay down all rule and dominion on the planet Earth, man. You see? And that's what that word kingdom means. King means, of course, what? Ruler. Uh, dumb is dominion. Yep. Yep. So the king's domain. And Yahweh Bashma Shah, he's uh, uh he, he set up, you know, heirs to that throne, heirs to that dominion. And that's that's starting with the first fruits, man, the 144,000 men. Mm -hmm. This is what we're fighting for. Yep. yep. So it says, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Mm -hmm. That's Psalms 2 and 8. All right, ask of me and I shall give you the heathen for your inheritance, man. Yep. People are going to serve, yeah, you can grab it, but yeah. people are going to serve Yahweh Shah, man. That's right. It says, all knees shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Yahweh Shah Mashiach is Lord, man. The 
king of kings, the Lord of lords. He's going to be upon that throne, the throne of David, man. man. And, and uh, amongst them, underneath him, is going to be the, those other kings, man. The yeah. remnant. Right. You know? Right. Like, we're literally reading right here. We're literally reading that the new order, the true new order that's about to come on this, come on this planet, man. We're just telling you before it happens. <laughs> so when it happens, bro, like, it's going to be like, wow. That's why I said it was Ezekiel 33 and 33. Then you shall know that a prophet have been among you. You got it up. Time, I got it. It's in Psalm chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 7. It says, I will declare the decree the Lord Yahweh has said unto me. Now, this is what Yahweh is speaking Right after all those crafty counsels is taken against the Lord and His anointed, this is this is all happening in in a chronological order, man. Right. You see, because it talks about in the beginning of this chapter, right? How the wicked, how they're uh, how they're taking counsel against the Lord and His anointed. That's exactly what we see and happening right now, man. Right. With these all these particular uh, W to the E to the F counsels, right? Who counseled and you know mm -hmm. all these bugged out you know counsels Esau got going on to try to establish his end to the W to the O, right? But it's going to be concluded with what? You got it? All right, we're from the top. Uh, Psalm, 2, Psalm 2, verse 7. From the top, I declare the decree the Lord Yahweh has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, mm -hmm. and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Man. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession, man. So so that's all coming to Yahweh. Shabbat. Let me finish this out in Daniel 7. It says, and there was given him dominion and, and glory and the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Man. Man. <laughs> Just like what you had read in uh, Revelation 11 and 15. It says, you shall reign uh, on the earth forever and ever. Mm. You know? Yep, so the throne of David, the house of David, will never be forgotten about never be taken off the planet earth again it will never be destroyed it's going to be here forever why because the lord when you read second samuel chapter 7 and first chronicle 17 the lord that was the, that was the everlasting covenant christians that the lord made with david that was the everlasting promise he says particularly like when you read in the nlt first chronicle 17 he told david i'm going to make out of you a dynasty of kings forever he says, where the children of the wicked will never oppress thee again. Now, right now, currently, we're being oppressed. Yep. But he says, the children of the wicked shall never oppress thee again. So that, that promise is still in effect, man. And it's for all generations, all as long as you see the sun, the moon. Matter of fact, let me get that in Jeremiah 33. As long as you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, yep. the Lord's always going to have a man sit upon the throne of David, man. Jer Jeremiah 31, like the last couple verses. Yep. I'm going to get this one in 33 real quick. Oh, okay. It's uh, Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse uh, <laughs> verse uh, 17. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. What does that mean? <laughs> Let me get in the NLT. This is uh, Jeremiah 33. Verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 17 in the NLT. For this is what the Lord says. David will have a descendant sitting on the throne of Israel forever. <laughs> Who's that descendant that's going to be sitting on his throne forever? You know, it was we just Solomon. read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just read it. Daniel chapter 7. Yeah. That son of man whose, whose dominion, whose, whose kingdom was going to be lasting forever, man. And then Malachi 3, 6 says what? I'm the Lord, and I change not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, so, your sons of Jacob are not. So it's like, there it is, right there. Yeah. All it's about the sons of Jacob, man. All about his his people, his inheritance. That's it. Point blank. Period. There's nothing else, man. You damn Christian, something else. It's uh, uh, uh yes, I'm bro. I was just gonna say, y'all don't know the Bible, man. <laughs> you got people like trying to quote the Bible. Y'all don't know the Bible, man. Mm -hmm. Just stop. Well, that's why Yahweh shall say in Revelation chapter one. He said, "What? Uh, for blessed is the man." That uh, that read it and understandeth the words of this book. Mm. This is Jeremiah thirty three and twenty four in the NLT. Have you noticed what people are saying? The Lord chose Judah and Israel and then abandoned them. And who's saying that? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at Vocab. <laughs> yeah. So like what Vocab yeah. is doing, that's prophecy, man. 
He, yep. The Lord put that nigga in his lot in the, in the end days to do exactly what he's doing. So this can be fulfilled. It says Jeremiah 33 and 24 in NLT. Have you noticed what people are saying? The Lord chose Judah and Israel and then abandoned them. So vocab, he's a necessary evil in yep. order for this prophecy to come to pass. Yep. It says they are sneering and saying that Israel is not worthy to be counted as a nation. And when they look at us so-called black spanking Native Americans, they're like, y'all not worthy to be the Lord's, uh, y'all not worthy to be the sons of God. Yep. Who the hell are y'all? Y'all just niggas. Get, get back to work. Get back to Amazon. You know, get back to FedEx. You know? <laughs> So it says, yeah, that's why, that's why, you know, the scriptures like in uh, Eve unto the uh, accuser of our brethren, you know, he goes out of his way to make Jake, you know, uh, go, not only go off, right, but then he puts a spotlight on that shit and he, he fucking broadcasts it out to the world so that he can, you know, in his head justify, you know, the things that he's doing and, you know, make himself believe <laughs> that we're not the people, mm -hmm. you know, but he know we're the people. That's why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. You know? And they showing you, man, like the brothers we were just talking about uh, before we turned the camera on uh, was talking about that movie on Netflix, They Clone Tyrone. That's literally Esau showing you like, yeah, yeah, we know it's something special about y'all, but we're going to pollute everything that y'all that y'all partake in. We're going to pollute your food. We're mm -hmm. going to pollute your women. We're going to turn them to sluts. We're going to pollute your men. We're going to turn them to pimps and gangbangers, you know, and drug dealers and sorcerers. We're going to turn them into, into the Christian pastors. Oh, and in that movie, spoiler alert, right? But in that movie, uh, uh, yeah, brother, 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 brother. Brother. <laughs> yeah, brother, and sister, watch that movie, man. It's showing you how Esau, he know who we are, man. He just, hey, he just, he wants to keep Jake in this degenerate state, right? It says, verse 25, but this is what the Lord says. I would no more reject my people Ooh. than I would change my laws that govern night and day, earth and sky. I'm talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, man. I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, Ooh. my servant. So you got to talk about David, man. Yeah. You got to. That's why Luke, the first chapter, yeah, speaks yeah, about what? Okay. The throne. Are you grabbing that? Yeah, I was all talking about this earlier. I'm going to finish out. You got Sorry. it. It says, I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, my servant, or change the plan that David's descendants, and where's that plan at? We just said it, 2 uh, Samuel 7, verse Chronicle 17. I will never change the plan that David's descendants will rule the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, I will restore them to their land and have mercy on them. That's Isaiah 14, man. You got it out? Kind of. Uh... Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Oh, start at verse uh, 30, 32. 32, got yep. it. Yep. This is Luke chapter 1 and verse 32. And it reads, He shall be great and shall be called son of the highest. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh by Shia Shai shall give unto him the throne of David. Shall give unto who? Shall give, uh, shall give, shall give to him the throne of his father David. There you have it. That's the of that prophecy he says I, I, I will always give uh david a man to sit upon his throne man that's your i was shot and also along with that psalms 122 david himself said what there are set thrones mm -hmm. in jerusalem yeah. so that's going to be 144,000 thrones man yeah. and lord that's what we fighting for man you got it up yeah. verse 33 he shall reign over the house of jacob forever that's what he told peter for you shall uh he says uh you're going to receive a hundredfold and you're going to pretty much, you know, rule over, rule over the house of Israel. You know, the Lord is going to put his men like the, the cream of the crop, those first fruits, the best of his class. He's going to put them above everything and everyone, man. Yep. You see, even even the rest of the nation of Israel, man, like the two thirds are going to be destroyed on this side. They're going to be in a good position in the kingdom, but they're going to be governed by the aristocrats of our nation. Right. Strong with Yahweh Shai. Right. You got it, bro. It's going to be yeah. ordered. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, just like when you read the book of Judges. When you read the book of Judges, the Lord raised up judges to judge over Israel, yep. to set all, make sure everything is fair, equally balanced. You know, it was true judgment going on between neighbor and neighbor, between husband and wife, all those things, man. Yeah. You got it. I was just going to say, you know, this is very pivotal to understand the scriptures because, I mean, it all goes back to Yahweh Shai, but him being titled the son of David is very crucial because that links up also with. You know, uh, the house of David, the tabernacles of David, mm -hmm. that the Lord said he would uh, restore, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, for example, in this system, 
you have what? You have the president, right? And you have, uh, he has a cabinet, if you will, right? He has secretaries and particular officers that he appoints, right? The general who he appoints, but he also has, you know, uh, what? You have the, uh, the Senate House, right? You have the House of Representatives, Congress. It's the same thing, not the same thing as far as the actual structure of it, but when the scriptures talk about the son of David, all right, the house of David, the tabernacle of David, it's, it's describing uh, a governing body of the world to come. That's what we're, that's what we're going into. Okay. And, and if I may add, you know, and even on this side, as we're coming back into our truth, into the truth, that's why it's so important. The house of David, what the scripture says, for we are receiving, I brought this out, we're part of that number, the sheer mercies of David. You know, understanding that it all really begins, it starts with the house of David was being reconstructed right now, man. So you can't leave David out, man. You know, that's that's a pivotal point. That's the foundation to uh, what this whole thing is being built off of, man. Under the house shot. And, and if I may too, bro, because uh, David had the heat in his subjection, man. Thank you. And it says that he was a man after the most high's own heart, bro. So for somebody today to say that David was unrighteous for doing that very act, this was a man after the most high's own heart. Yep. I Meaning he shared the same kind of mentality that the Heavenly Father does. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, people try to uh, throw shade on David, you know, for committing adultery and, you know, murdering. But guess what? We've done worse than David. Uh -huh. Like every woman that we dealt with, that's adultery, man. Yeah. If you were a woman right now, right, that's adultery. If she yeah. got a virgin. She did yeah. when she was a virgin. So, yeah, so they're going to be talking about David. David did, well, okay, well, you did worse and you still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but that was necessary. For, that was a necessary evil, right? that David did for what? For the Lord to show mercy on who he wants to show mercy on. That's right. So we can hope for the sure mercies of David, as Isaiah 55 uh, speaks about. That's what we're hoping for, the sure mercies of David. Man. Sure. Sure. You know? So yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a little more. Okay. Yeah, I got a real quick point on this too. Like on that verse you just read, it said, uh, it's a precept right here. It actually said the 2 Samuel 7 and 11 as well. Wow. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Right. Yeah, it's sword, that bro. Yeah. Proving that that, that Yahweh Shah was going to be feel that. He was going to come back and feel it. Yeah. This uh verse 33, I'm going to finish it out. It reads. You said he gave you that prophecy of 2 Samuel 7? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what is, and that also proves that Yahweh shot Solomon. Mm -hmm. You know? So Esau knows, man. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. That's heavy. Luke chapter 1, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Yeah, any nigga who don't want Yahweh shot to reign over you, guess what? Yahweh shot is going to have his men to bring bring you hither and slay him before your feet, before his feet, man. Luke 19, 27. You see, but a lot of our people, they they, they say what? Uh, we have no king but Caesar. Mm -hmm. Those same <laughs> niggas are back today. Mm -hmm. When they was crucifying your house shot, when you read what that, John 18 and John 19, you know, Jake back then was saying, listen, we have no king but Caesar. Just give us Caesar. And those same spirits are back today, man. The same, all, all these two-thirds about to give that karagma. Yep. You're saying we have no king but Caesar. <laughs> you know? Yep. It's that last final ass whooping. Remember when we was younger, you may have got that one particular ass whooping. It was just like, okay. <laughs> that's, that was the one. Made all that's the, the difference. difference. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the last final ass whooping for you two. Yeah. Right. You know, I got some if I'm here. Got got it. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 2. And uh, I'm going to start at verse uh, 26. This is red letters, so we know this is Yahweh Shai speaking, man. It says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Mm. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, mm. as the vessels of a pot potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father. So that's that recompense coming back into the heathen, as you read in Obadiah. Mm. You know, it goes into how uh, the house of Jacob shall be a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, yep. and all the heathen shall be in subjection in that day, man. That that is going to be servants and, and slaves in the kingdom of heaven, man. Right. Yes. Why is heaven? Yeah, iron. That's 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 your hardest metal. Yeah. So that um, proves that what the kingdom of heaven. Right, the throne of David, that's gonna be it's gonna be a fierce, rigid regime, man. You know, man, David, he was putting them heathens, he had them lined when you read that second Samuel 5, he had them heathens lined up on the ground, right? <laughs> row by row by row. He killed off like two rows, saved the third row, right? He was putting he was putting heathens under the saws, putting particular heathens in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing about that? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, what's that, Malachi 4 yeah, 1? Yeah. Behold, the day of the Lord shall be at the oven, man. Yeah, who's going so, in. so the throne of day. Hey, <laughs> who's going in? Hey, man. So the Lord's the Lord cold, bro. You know? Nah, man, real quick, yep. we were just in Daniel 7, and it speaks on how those different beasts, those are kings. 
Everybody can't be the king at the same time. Somebody yeah. got to rule, others got to be the subjects. Mm -hmm. They rules over it. Yeah. So guess what? Lord already set up his everlasting kingdom under y'all with shy with his men. It's gonna be it's gonna be eternal and you can't do anything about it. So niggas that don't want to get with the program, that's that's the whole Bible's about, it's about judgment. Somebody it gotta be those judges being set up. That's what it's about. Yeah, because right now, as it says in Habakkuk, the first chapter it says the uh, there's no judge, there's no the law is slack, therefore yeah. righteous judgment doesn't proceed. Yeah. You don't think that's gonna slide in the kingdom of heaven, man? Absolutely yeah. not, bro. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be order restored on the planet Earth, man. And instantly. It's gonna be instant recompense. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna jump back to numbers. God. Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spirit, yeah. listen. God. I think we're gonna hit. Just to open for him, Mike. This is back in the book of Numbers, chapter twenty-four, and verse nineteen again. It says, "Out of Jacob shall come he that has that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city." Mm -hmm. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said. Amalek was the first of the nations, mm -hmm. but his latter end shall be that he perished forever. Yeah, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end that he shall perish forever, man. When you go into that Hebrew word first, right, it's rosh, which means the head. Yeah. Amalek, these 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 small headers, they're the head of these nations, man. And the Lord's looking at them right now. Yeah. He's visiting this place during the time of Amalek ruling, man. And he's like, he's going to perish forever. The Lord, remember what he said in what was that, Exodus uh, 17 and uh, 15, if we grab that. Because you know? the Lord, hey, he hates all Edomites, but out of all the dukes of Edom, yeah, he I really hates that. these Amicalites, man. Yep. This, this is Exodus 17 and 15. And, Mos and Moses built an altar and called the name of it, is that going to come on? Mm -hmm. uh, Johanna. Jehovah Nisus. For ye have said, and Moses built an altar and called the name of it. Now, what is an altar known for? What, what, what is it? What is it made for? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Yep, and also a place of remembrance. Yep. An altar that hey, you, you set up stones of a, a memorial, you know, so you can remember something. All right. So in the spirit, all right, this altar still exists, man. Go ahead. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisus. Mm -hmm. And he said, Jehovah you know, Nisi, and you hear a lot of Christians, uh, that's a gospel song, Jehovah Nisi. They don't know if that's going into it, though. <laughs> that's going into the Lord destroying your enemy, man. You know? God, Go ahead. God. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Yeah, the Lord has sworn. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he put this on his name, man. Mm. I'm going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And this now why you this is exactly why you got uh well because Elder Yashwami just did a lesson uh, either yesterday or earlier this morning about now how uh, that dude Noah Yuval Harari he's talking about um, how they need to uh, make sure that all conspiracy theorists need to be taken off the internet immediately because they pose a threat to um, you know to pretty much like their uh, to pretty much their so called quote unquote you know health and you know their agendas and how they're saying that. That these C theories are talking about, you know, the uh, the elites, you know, mm -hmm. but that's because Amalek he's found out, man. Yeah. Amalek he's made fair, but that's that's a part of the Lord having war with him from generation to generation, man. Yeah. And he knows, bro. He knows that that Yahweh Bashim is on his ass. That's why now they're talking about these chariots more and more. Mm -hmm. You see, it's like yeah, they're talking about these chariots every day. You know, you got the Pentagon talking about they have a remains of aliens. You know, that's just Esau blasphemy in the heavens, like the scripture says in Revelation 13, man. But anybody got anything? God. So, yeah, we go, uh, we go to, we just skip down to verse 8. Okay. We, just, we just hit a few and wrap it up. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 8. It says, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. The seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken. That's right. Can we read that again? Con. <laughs> Isaiah 41 and 8. It says, but thou, Israel, are my servant. That's right. We're his servant, man. We're his servants on the right-hand side. Everybody's his servant. Everybody, you know, works for the Lord. But the nation of Israel was set up to be his servants on the right-hand side. That's why we're known as the kingdom of priests. Because what are priests supposed to do? They're supposed to go in the presence of the Lord and serve <laughs> You see, to usher in the spirit of the Lord upon the place, upon and his vibration in the atmosphere, man. Mm -hmm. 
It said, can you read that again? Kind. And servants also help me. You know, like like we always make the allegory to you know us being the wife. <laughs> you know, that's what a wife job is to serve. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah forty one at, at a table. You know. Yeah. You know, that's what you call them. You know, uh, uh, servers. Yep. Yep. And we're serving you things from the Lord's table: the bread, the water, the wine. Waiters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. waiters. Yeah. 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 Man. <laughs> that's it. Isaiah 41 and 8, it says, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Yeah, the seed of Abraham, my friend. And we know that just because you, you come from the seed of Abraham, I don't make you a child of the Lord. Yep. You read Romans 9. It's more than just because Christians like El Yashwama also spoke about Christians like to try to hijack Abraham, right? But it, it goes past Abraham. Then you got Isaac, yes. and then it's past Isaac, then it's unto Jacob. And unto Jacob his seed shall be called. You see, that's why he mentioned Jacob right there. He says, Jacob, who, whom I have chosen. You see? And that's this is for you, us so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man. This is our heritage. You see? The Lord is our portion. As a matter of fact, um, where is that at? Uh, well, I ain't gonna grab it. But it speaks about, I, I can't remember exactly where it's at, uh, how the Lord is our, the Lord is, is Jacob's portion. Uh, um, and a lot of his inheritance. Oh, that's yeah. a lot of uh, that's Deuteronomy 32. 32 okay, and 9. Yeah. 32 and 9. Yeah. What? You got a piece of it? Nah, yeah, I'll grab it. It's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 9. And it reads, For you, for you how about you? This, this is prophecy, man. Like, you see how brothers just, you know, yeah. like, this is in brother's spirits, man. That's prophecy right there. Yeah, yeah. Amalek ain't doing this. The one who claims to be the Lord's chosen people, they can't go through the scriptures like this, man, and, and say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, oh, oh yeah, I know, what you, I know what you're looking for. Yeah, this is what the Lord said. No, this is prophecy. Before you get that out. And if I may, yeah. why are you grabbing that? We didn't go to no seminary school. We didn't go to no, yep. none, none, none of that shit either, man. Yep. It's the spirit of the Lord that's upon us that got us uh, in this in this manner, in this way. Yeah, yeah this is uh, Isaiah 59 and 21 in the... Uh, uh, KJV version. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed. See, the actual physical descendants. Romans 8 and 16, for the spirit is bear, itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of the Most High. It says, nor out of the mouth of thy seeds, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, says the Lord from henceforth and forever. <laughs> so you got it up. Okay, this is Deuteronomy 32 and verse 9. For your how about Shinoshah's portion is his people. Man, that's we're the Lord's portion. Can we go? On? I'm curious what that word portion is. <laughs> 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 yep. All right. <clears throat> And you consider like a pie, you know? Grandma, she just you pour the pie out the oven. You know, you the big brother. You claim your portion out right now. This is mine. Don't touch that. Everybody know like this, that's his. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's how Israel is with the Lord, man. You got it. Yeah. It's Strong's age 2506. It's uh Halakwa or Halakwa. It says portion, share, part, territory. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> We're the Lord's territory, man. He put his name on us, man. Allotment. Allotment. Wow. Yep. And that's why he severed us from all these other nations. The Leviticus 2026. 20, the Lord says, What? <coughs> uh, I have severed you from other people that you should be mine. You know, that you should be my portion. You should be my allotment. We're joined. We're married unto Yahweh Bashmah through blood covenant. You see? Yep. And that blood is ultimately going through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice. Starting with the elect, though. Because two thirds is about to be treated just like Esau, man, these times. I'll be on that. Come, come. Can I ask him real quick? Come. I look at the definition. It said uh, one's possession. And, you know, the Lord, throughout the scriptures, he likened the nation of Israel as a woman. And what does scripture say about a woman? A man get it, the woman get it, their possession. So we'll look at it as his possession, pretty much, add on to the point of that portion. Mm -hmm. and, and if something's yours, you're jealous over it. You know, you're jealous of your woman. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's why the Lord finna uh, uh, commits the Valley Jeho uh, Jehoshaphat, Yahushaphat, for the jealousy and the controversy of Zion, man, over his woman. That's crying out. The woman that's crying out. Mm -hmm. 
he ain't coming for the sluts that's, that that don't mind being ran through, right. talking to and entertaining other strangers, mm -hmm. under other these strange philosophies. Out mm -hmm. no, we calling them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's look, he's coming back for that woman that, that's standing stiffly for him, that's that's bringing honor to his household. Man. Yeah, mm -hmm. got to make the twenty second chapter. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes into that that version that cried out. Yep. You know yep. how how her end was better than the version that just went with it. Mm -hmm. You know, Esau trying to lay with, with the most high woman right now, man. Yeah. You know, Responding to the DMs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he slid in your DMs and you went ahead and, you know, responded back. Yeah. You're not supposed to respond back. You're supposed to block his ass. Yep. <laughs> you know? These bitches getting his name tattooed on him. Right. Like MOTB. You know? Yeah. 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 I just want to add, because y'all was talking about, like, the word uh, jealousy. That means demanding exclusive service. Well, the Lord gives the nation of Israel exclusive service. He, he deals with them a whole different type of way than the yeah. other nations. So, likewise, he wants to be reciprocated for us to deal with him the same way as he does for us. Yeah. That's right. I got you. Uh, it's uh, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 9. For your how about you Shah's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Yep. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. Proving what? Once again, as we quoted earlier, hey, uh, Isaiah, uh, Psalm, what was that? Romans the ninth chapter. From Abraham to Isaac, then Jacob. You know, so you gotta you gotta come from the loins of Jacob. Now we can't we can't you know track our lineage all the way back to our great 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 grandfather. We're going strictly off the spirit, man, because we just got that in Isaiah fifty nine. It said that that hey, if you're part of the seed of Jacob and the Lord's covenant is with you, man. Hey, this not this not going to depart out of your lips from from all generations, man. So this is why we're giving the words of our testimony, man. Can I pull that right quick and most time? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. this is a Romans nine and uh, nine and seven. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they the children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Right, because in church, what do we learn? We grew up with songs, Father Abraham had me and his sons, and that type of shit. We used to sing in church and all that. Nowhere ever in church, anytime they talk about Jacob, man, and I, and Isaac. Okay, so neither are you because you are the uh, uh, the seed of Abraham, but in Isaac, okay, shall the seed be called. Okay, because through Isaac comes Jacob, which which is the father of the twelve tribes, man, which is the the, the kingdom and the dominion that'll be set up under Yahweh Yahweh Shah, man. All right, so there's a specific seed line that is chosen, okay, you know, and that that, that comes through the loin of Jacob, man, via Isaac. Just add on to that, what the priest was saying, man, because the church was they got that finally confused, man. All right. So yeah, uh, let's see. We'll, yeah, we'll get a couple more. Uh, we we'll skip down to verse uh, 10, Isaiah 41 and 10. Oh, sure. Come on. Isaiah chapter 40, 41 and verse 10, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Yeah, that, Be not dismayed, for yeah. I am thy power. Now, this is being addressed unto the seed of Jacob, strong with the elect, man. Mm -hmm. You see? That elect seed, that precious. As a matter of fact, I'm going to grab this in the book of Sirach. The scripture says that the uh, that the, poster, the posterity, meaning the descendancy, of his elect shall never be cut off. Mm. This is the book of uh, Sirach, chapter 40, 47, and verse 22. It says, But the Lord will never leave off his mercy. And the fact that the Lord raised up a remnant in these times, that's mercy right there. What is that? Isaiah chapter 1. It says, for if the Lord did not uh, raise up a, a very small remnant, we should have been at Sodom and Gomorrah. So the fact that the Lord, in the in the time of this perverse spirit of Moism going out rampant throughout the earth, the Lord got me and more manlier than ever. You know, <laughs> like, that's mercy right there. It says, but the Lord will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish. Neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect and the seed of him that loveth him. It says the seed of him that loveth him. Proving what? You got to come from a particular seed line Ooh. to love the Lord, man. Only the nation of Israel can love the Lord. Yep. Particularly the, that, uh, the, uh, the posterity of the elect. You see? It says, and the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away. You look at Noah. Noah, prime example. The Lord didn't take away Noah, man. The Lord preserved Noah. Noah. It says in the book of uh, Sirach 44, he was an example unto the elect. God. It says, and the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away. Wherefore, he gave a remnant unto Jacob, and out of him a root unto David. 
this lines exactly what up, <laughs> what we've been going through, man. So, um, yeah, you got some? No, I was gonna... Oh, you hit that? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, um. Yeah, you're good. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy power. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Yeah, that right hand, we know it's Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is upholding us, man. You see? Matthew chapter 28, Yahweh Shah says what, bro? Let me grab that. This is uh, the book of Matthew. And whatever you brother got. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 28 and verse, uh, nine, I'll start right here, verse 19. It says, go you therefore and teach all nations. And why are we teaching all nations? Because Israel scattered to all nations, baptizing them, right, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's why we open up with our, with our lesson with what? And close our lesson with you know, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Shema Shah, by Shem Rakakwadash. That's baptize you. We're about to baptize you with these scriptures. Yep. But we're telling you in the names of the coming. Yahweh, his son, uh, his son Yahweh Shah, and the Holy Spirit. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Woo. See, so you, hey, when you're going to start wearing world there, that's not, a, you know, in the Greek, you got three Greek words for world. You got uh, cosmos, wekemene, and, a, uh, and eon, or aeon, mm -hmm. right? You go into the word world here, it's aeon, it means age. So Yahweh Shah said, I'm going to be with you all the way into the end of Esau's age, man. Because Rome was ruling then. So Yahweh Shah is amongst his men right now as we're teaching you see? The Apostle Paul in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, he said, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That was wrong. Who was headed by what? Edom, so-called white man. Mm -hmm. He's back here today in the revised Roman Empire, <laughs> continuing on that legacy. Yep. And he thinks he's going to now get it to the point where he has the whole earth. And well, I mean, the scripture does say that earth is given into the hand of the wicked, but it's only for a short period of time, as it says in Job 20, that uh, know ye not since the beginning of the earth that the triumphing of the wicked is short, but for a moment, yep. that prosperity is short-lived, man, because it's, 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 it's in a vibration of left-hand wickedness, man. You see? <laughs> so that's that's the difference in why I, I like to talk about how the, how the kingdom of heaven is always going to uh, is, is going to be an everlasting kingdom because we're going to be perfected, man. Okay. There, where, where there was no sin, there's no death, as the scripture says. Okay. So there won't be any death of the kingdom of heaven, man. <laughs> Not with the Israelites. Not with the Israelites. That's right, God. The water. The water, because that's a, that's, a, that's a key point. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. So, uh, so yeah, we got that because it says in Isaiah forty-one, "I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness," and that right hand is Yahweh Shah. We just got how Yahweh Shah is going to be with his men as they're teaching and observing all the nation of Israel throughout these scattered nations to uh, observe all the things that he's commanded, man. Yeah. So Yahweh Shah is with us. He says, "Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm in the midst of thee." What you got it, bro? Isaiah forty-one, kind verse eleven. Okay. Isaiah 41 and 11, it says, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. And incense means that you're you waxing hot. Mm -hmm. You know, like you light an incense, it, you gotta, it's, it's getting hot. We see an Esau, he's coming down with that hot fury, that hot rage right now. But it's going to be of no prevail against the elect. Mm -hmm. Quick one. Okay. This is uh, 2 Ezra 16 and um, verse... Uh, verse 68 it says for behold the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you Man, okay. and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols yep. just linking up all these prophecies you know proven you know i mean we already know but you know for the new listener or whatever <laughs> the validity of the scriptures they're all in a harmony with one another they're literally describing the same thing Man. so again now in these times, we're literally witnessing the heathen, those around about us, uh, uh, get hot. You know, this truth going out is really starting to piss off these people. You know, to the point to where they're literally going to want to put hands on us. You know, but the victory, you know, victory has been uh, proclaimed. You know, mercy has been proclaimed. You know, Lord's will, we received those things. 
Yeah. Back hey, in the Isaiah. Could you read that again? Out that verse that you read in, in Isaiah? In Isaiah? Yeah, in Isaiah 41. Kind yeah. Isaiah 41 and 11, it says, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Kind of. So that made me think about Obadiah 1. You know what I'm saying? Obadiah, because it's a reference towards Esau. And I'm going to get to the point. It says, uh, verse 10, it says, For thy violence against thy brother, Jacob, shame shall come to thee. And thou should be cut off forever, because Esau is the main one being instance against us, you know what I'm saying? Alongside with the heathen joining hand with him. But they say they should be ashamed. This is going to how he's going to shame one to cover him for him being incense against us, man. Mm -hmm. That was like, I'm not go and get up that way. Yeah. Isaiah 41 11, it says, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. Hmm. And they they that strive with thee shall perish. This is Zechariah chapter 12 and 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling mm. unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And we're in a siege right now. Yep. Right? It says, and in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone. That's that great millstone. For all people, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it, man. Man. Mm. <laughs> so anybody who comes up against it, you cut yourself, man. That's so, why it says that uh, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Like all these, all these particular people, like vocab. Every time he come up to the camp, he gets confounded. He gets cut. He cuts himself. You know, all these Christians, uh, women, everybody, anybody. You know, because this is not a man. As it says, was that Acts chapter five? If it be a man, it shall be overthrown. But if it be of the Most High, you shall happily find yourself fighting against the Most High. Yep. And we know how that's going to turn out. You fight against the Lord, you're going to lose. You're going to be the one looking like a dummy in the end, man. Yep. Uh, yep. Somebody has something. I guess we'll get that last one. Verse, uh, we we'll skip down to verse uh, 13 and 14 and 15, and we'll uh, wrap up now. Or 16. Kind of. We just can't. Isaiah 41 and verse uh, 13. It says, for I, the Lord, or for I, Yahweh, thy power, will hold okay. thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, yep. and ye men of Israel. Yep, fear not, thou worm Jacob. Because a worm is a very weak creature, a frail creature, man. Because when you look at our position as, as Israelite men here in this society, we're worms here, man. We don't, ha we don't have no military. We ain't got nothing. We got to go to Esau. And the want of all things for our food, for our bread, for our water, for everything. We're worried. We're defenseless, man. Yep. So this is why these scriptures, this is the only thing that makes sense. Putting your faith in your how about Shai, that is the only thing that makes sense. And the Lord did this for a reason, man. He took away any other option away from us, you know? <laughs> God. We know joining the military now, okay, that's that's out the window. That's, that's going. We're going to be destroyed if we do that. So shit, man, what, what am I supposed to do? You shouldn't be fighting. Yeah, put your with shot. You get that military. Yeah, right? put your faith in the Lord, man. That's yeah. the only way to, to get that armor, to get that protection, man. Yep. Because too objectively speaking, if you look at majority of our people that are like on these different podcasts and shit, talking about coming together and making a community, and we've done that, man. The different Black Wall Street, so on and so forth. Yep. Bro, we've tried that. It's not yep. gonna work. The only way out is up, as brothers like to say, man. That's the only way we're getting out of here, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, enduring it to the end. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't go against the will of the Lord, bro. No. It's not written that we're going to establish a, a sovereign kingdom in Esau's captivity. We're going to somehow, half of the U.S. is going to be ours. <laughs> like, we're going to ha have our own banks. Bank right. That's not written to go like that, bro. Yeah. It's written that this place is on its way, dwindling the drain, and that amongst, the, amongst all that chaos and all the the turmoil that's taking place and about to take place on a much heavier level, there's going to be a remnant that's going to be saved out of it, man. You know, so. That's right. Wow. Yeah, okay. Isaiah 41 and 14. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Yeah. Verse 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. That's right. So he says, right now you're a worm. But I'm going to make you a new sharp threshing instrument. So we're in the process of being made right now, man. This truth levels you up. Because yep. it all starts in the spirit. 
You know, because, yeah, we, we us brothers, yeah, we, we want spiritual power. We want to be turned to that weapon, to that battle axe. But it all happens first in the mind. That's why, you know, we're commanded, you know, on a daily basis to be renewed and changed, you know, and made into a new creature on a daily basis. You know, and, and, and uh, habitual practice of that is going to eventually make us into this sharp version instrument that brothers want to be made into, man. And, and, and oh, you about to say something? No, no. Now, in a sharp threshing instrument, right? It's like like I know the priest has a mop. I can Dallas loves to go into it all the time. You know, a threshing instrument. That's something that that chops something down in pieces, man. Yeah. Typically, like you'll have a um, you'll have a a hard you have like a hard sheet metal, and you have like rocks on the bottom of it. You know, nailed together. You know, and it would just, it would just be going over the grain, just beating it and grinding it to, to pieces to powder, man. You see, and that's what the Lord, that's what the Lord is going to make his men. It's going to make us into, what is that, Wisdom Psalm 5? I'm going to turn the creature into the weapon. <laughs> Man. It was a, I can't remember the movie. I can't remember the movie. I may be making it up, but, you know, uh, <laughs> I, if I'm not mistaken, it, it was off a training day or something. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, I heard somebody say, like, uh, I don't need no weapon. I am the weapon. You know, I've heard that. Before. You've heard that? Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, you're may not, not be you're not lying. Yeah, okay, okay, God. Yeah, but the Lord's gonna make his men into the weapon, man. You know? I was gonna build on what you were gonna say. I was just gonna say, because you made a point about really, you know, the word, it starts with the word. You know, that's why uh the, the Hebrews 4 and 12, uh, the word is sharp and powerful, uh, or quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Man. So in, in order to become uh the the that sharp threshing instrument, first we have to embody the word. You know, and then it's a, it's a, it's a maturation. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. That perfect soldier, because Ephesians, the sixth chapter, goes into the putting on the whole armor of the most high, man. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah. hey, that's, yeah, that's beautiful. Can I get that uh, threshing instrument yeah. here in the blue letter? Yeah. It says, an instrument of husbandry for rubbing out corn on a threshing floor. It consists of oh, three. Yeah. It says, on the threshing Can you grab God. Jeremiah 51 and 33? That's the spirit. Because where's that, who's that threshing floor? We're, we're living in that threshing floor. Right now. It just hasn't been threshed yet, though. Yeah. So this is where the nitty-gritty work, you know, of destruction and salvation is going to happen at, right here in Babylon, the great America. Yeah. That threshing floor is false. Jer yep. Jeremiah 51 to 33, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the power of Israel, the daughter of Babylon, the That's daughter right. of Babylon, and who rules the daughter of Babylon? Psalms 137. O Edom, daughter of Babylon, Isaiah 47, sit thou in the dust, thou daughter of Babylon. You got it? It says, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Mm. And, and who's going to be doing the threshing? Mm. We're reading it right here in Isaiah 41, the men of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right now we're worms, but he's going to make us into that sharp threshing instrument to, 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 to do damage on Babylon the Great, man. You got it out? It says, yet a little while. And the time of her harvest shall come. Just yet a little while, brothers. Just wait. Yep. Yet a little while, the time of her thresh is going to come, man. Like the brother had quoted in Job 20. But the triumphing of the wicked is short. Esau, he just had a short little work of deception to do upon his, upon his earth. All right. And then in a little while, the Lord is going to turn us from our feeble estate into a great mighty estate forever, man. Okay. We finish. Yes, yes. Uh, um, it's an instrument of husbandry rubbing out the corn on a threshing floor. It consists of three or four wooden cylinders armed with stone or iron and joined together. Oh, where those stones? Those lively stones. First Peter 2. God. God. You know, and iron. We yep. read about, uh, what is that? Uh, battle axe. Yep. Oh, so battle iron. axe. Yeah, Revelation 2. I'm going to give you that iron. Yep. That rod of iron. Rod of iron. Yep. The rod of iron. Yep. yep. Uh, with stones or iron and joined together as a sledge. It is drawn by joined together as a sledge. Strong with this word, Jeremiah 23, 29. It's not my my word like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. It was also like the house of even the house of Judah. They're joined together in one stick. Man, yep. You know what I mean? To be that yeah, to be that yeah, to be that threshing, you know what I mean? Man. It is drawn by cattle over corn to separate the grains from the ear. Man. Woo. Yep. And that's what why scripture right. says in Revelation 14, for the for the harvest is right. Joel the third chapter says the same thing. The harvest is ripe. Yep. You know, put in now thy sickle and reap. I was Ooh. looking for that, bro. I couldn't okay. kind of figure out what chapter. I think was. that's Joel three. We can get that. Oh, no, oh the one it's in Revelation. Revelation yeah. Oh, yeah. Revelation fourteen. But I, yeah, no, you're right though. That's okay. in Joel as well. But I was just that's the I was looking at Revelation. I was like, damn, what 
Yeah, that'd be great. We could actually start a verse. Yeah, sure. Well, 2013, too. I, I'll read it. Uh, Jer uh, not, I'm sorry. <laughs> not Jeremiah. <laughs> <That's a lot. laughs> Revelation, <laughs> Revelation 14 and 14, it says, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And, up and upon the cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man. Mm. Has That's literally what Daniel 7 just said. Mm -hmm. read. Everything is full circle, man. <laughs> That's why a spirit of our Lord is a testimony of prophecy, man. That's right. Got it up. says, uh, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle, which is a, a instrument for harvesting, man. Yep. You know, when you even just Google what a sickle looks like, it looks like a, it's like a curve, like that crescent moon shape. Yeah. But it looks it looks like some like it could do some damage. That's man. where they get the idea of the Grim Reaper. You know, like, yeah. you know yep. people have images of the Grim Reaper. Well, that's man. really like yeah, I was shot, bro. Because because uh, uh, in Egypt, he was that that uh, death angel, right? You know. Right. Um, it says verse verse 15 and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him oh it says he came out the temple Ooh. we read in Habakkuk 2 and 20 let all the earth stand in silence for the Lord is in his holy temple oh, man, man bro. <laughs> so when Yahweh shot come out first and foremost why is he in the temple to intercede and plead on our behalf yeah. father remember the sacrifice I did yeah. put the wall up on these men because I'm about to leave this temple and destroy this place, man. <laughs> so now he's coming out the temple, doing work, man. Up on the threshold floor, uh, Babylon the Great. God. It says uh, in uh, verse 15, And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Ooh. It says, uh, And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And this is pretty much just going into the Hawashai taking the kingdoms, man. You know, bringing that last and final plague and judgment into the earth. You know, amongst all the other things that's going to be taking place, you know, World War Three, all the famines, all the, the whole build up to that last, that ultimate climax, man. Leading into what? the Essentially the beginning of, the beginning phases of the kingdom of heaven being established, man. You know? Yeah, that, that Greek word, Greek, is strong G2325. It says uh, to reap, to harvest, uh, to cut off, mm. to destroy. Yahweh Shah is going to be on that fathership, <laughs> you know, destroying shit, man. You know, scripture says in uh, Psalms 110, I'll grab that real quick. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 110, and verse, verse, uh, uh, verse 5. It says, the Lord at thy right hand, as thy right hand again, shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. Man. So Yahweh Shah, when the scripture is going to him reaping, that's him filling the places with dead bodies. Because yeah. like your modern day uh, reaping instrument is like, really like a weed eater. Yeah. Like, you know, you you in a field, you know, you in a lawn business, whatever, you got a whole bunch of high weeds. You know, because like that, 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 that weed eater string, that's like the sickle, mm -hmm. you know, so you just going down, just chopping through shit, man. Yeah. And then when you're done, you just see the blaze of grass just all over the place. Just, you know, now you got to Now you got to get a, now you got to get a broom or something, sweep it up, put it in a towel, burn it. Yep. Yep. That's what Yahweh Shah is about to do to these people. Yeah. That's why David says in Psalms 37, you know, fret not for the wicked doers, for they, they shall soon be cut down and withered as the grass. Yeah. You know, so... <laughs> Hey man, Yahweh Shah, we can't push him enough, man. Why not? The author and finisher of our faith? Yeah, yeah. So that was it, huh? Pretty much it. Time. Mm -hmm. So, anybody got anything? So, yeah, man. So, you know, with that, we hope you optimize our walk for edified. You know, until next time, we're going to give all praise, honor, glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Rakan Badash. We're going to give double honors to the Apostle over the Great Millstone, DTA, a ball for ball, coming to Shalom. 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 Well, I don't know.